Howdy friends. Today is the, um, let me turn that air compressor off because it'll kick on. Today I think it's the 27th or 28th of June 2019. And um, all this week and last weekend I've been doing a tremendous amount of work on this car and only this car. Um, well, where do I start? What do I talk about? The, um, let me make sure this thing's still on. Yep. What I've done, tail panel welded to the floor. The floor junction from the spider floor, remember this is a spider floor, um, generically stamped fit all alphas with a lot of metal. So the junction between the large spider floor and the tail panels and the quarter panels is handmade small pieces of metal of various sizes. All of them are flanged over to be welded in only in the back. The sides are not. The sides actually float as I indicated earlier. I did not know that. I had to consult with Vintage Customs guy named Daron asked him. He's the expert on these cars. He said, no, they just float. Seam sealer is put in there. Cocking is put in there. I'm going to put seam sealer in this one. And it just float. So this was my car. I would not even carry a spare tire in it. I just put maybe a maybe a, a speaker box or something in there. Because I wouldn't even want to put any weight. Nobody rides in the back seat in this car. No way. It's just so it's so lightweight and there's, there's no structure to it to speak of. That's why these things were so were raced a lot. And that's why every one was rear-ended in, in the ass end in the 70s and 80s with you know big Chrysler town and countries and uh, you know Ford LTD wagons. So they smashed them in. So this is all new. This has been reconstructed here. All this has been reworked metal. This one was okay. I just had to, <clears throat> this one was okay. <clears throat> just had to drill out the holes, make them a little bit larger. But I'm going to show you on the inside. It's not done. It's not pretty. And it's not presentable yet as like, yeah, look at this. So what you'll see is you'll see raw, unfinished work, which probably will elicit comments or opinions or this or that person can do better or maybe a different path which is fine um, remember there's a curve there so I had to take one piece of metal and make it so it curves so I sliced it up a little bit and relieved it to make it so it, it gives me that, that shape the piece of metal came from leftover new outer rockers from Classic Alpha. The little seam around the corner on the top lip, I was able to salvage that and use most of that metal, bend it up a little bit, and I used it for this piece right in here on the inside. So I was able to use the same gauge metal, nothing really thick or ignorant, but something the same gauge, very small, delicate metal, and I'm going to show you that right now. First of all, let me just show you here, that's still yet left to do, and this piece is going to go in here something like that, or maybe something like this, that's how it's going to go. Now over here, this is done. 
And that red stuff is a little bit of putty I put on it, but the putty was a little bit old, so I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to sand all that down and mix up some body filler and put that on top of that, make it smooth, so I can put this thing on this bracket. Now this bracket I've removed, of course, and I blasted it, painted the back in black. And then the front is primer. When the, the, the painter paints his car, he'll paint that. So this is all floating right here. It's tied in there. I was able to recreate that hole. And the spider pan has the flanges that go up. Um, up everywhere. On the, on the GTV, this, the flanges went down, so I had to make the flanges go down. And that's what I did in here also. Now this is the part that's kind of ugly. It's not done yet. So let me reorient the camera. Now I have decided that this car needs to go back on the rotisserie. Um, it's going to have to go on the rotisserie because I want to put more and better and thicker undercoating on the underside of it after I put on the seam sealer on the bottom of this car. I wasn't going to put this back on a rotisserie, but I've decided I'm going to do that. Flip the back over on it, redo the underside, put some thicker undercoating or the seam sealer on, and then and then put the uh, undercoating back on it. And I'll be able to weld better on the bottom and the back here, and dress it better, put undercoating or the undercoating and the uh, seam sealer all in those areas um, like it should be. I don't want to get on my back and do it. It's, uh, it's always easier in the car. It comes out better if you can go and do it in that manner. Flip it upside down. So I'm going to do it again on this car as soon as I get the top side done. Let me show you the, uh, the seam sealer I did on the inside of the car. It's a pretty cool tool that I bought to use to do the seam sealer. It's an air tool. It sprays the seam sealer in like a typical cartridge. And I'll show you the seam sealer gun in a moment, but this section right here is what I was able to harvest off of an old uh, unused portion of a, of a rocker right here. So this section right here is what I used in the back. So let me go show you this gun. It's an air gun. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a neat tool. And the cartridge goes right in here. There's multiple tips in here. <clears throat> One thing you have to do on this gun is really clean it very well after you're done. So it's better to always be ready to do seam sealer on multiple on multiple things at the same time. This is the stuff I use right here. Sprayable seam sealer. Pretty good stuff. Very good stuff. So, well, that's about it for the Alpha for today. I'm going to put this car up today, and I've got to uh, do some reorienting of machinery here to get doing media blasting this weekend. i got to move the Porsche 928 out of the way, move some stuff around, clean up. i got to redo the gloves in the booth. 
couple small things I'll do tomorrow and get ready for the weekend. A lot of blasting to do. So, <clears throat> until then, let's just set the camera down. And I apologize for not doing really high quality videos. They do work. It just takes so much time to do all that production value cool stuff with Adobe, which I just, I don't want to do it. I, I don't have time to do it. I'd rather do this stuff and just make raw videos, post them up, showing what I'm doing, unedited, just try to make it, you know, presentable um, and interesting. That's what I like to do. The camera just tipped over. I'll say goodbye. Cheers. Everybody have a good weekend. Take care.